Petr Solon graduated from FAMO in Prague in 1953. It was the year when Stalin and Klement Gottwald, the first leader of communist Czechoslovakia, died. Czechoslovak film industry at that time was state-owned and moreover state-controlled. Solon started in a short film studio as every filmmaker had to at that time, to prove that he was creatively, but above all politically able to make films. He could have chosen an easy path, a path of consent, a subservience to the regime. However, he did not confirm himself as a consenting artist. He was not outright marginalized in the Czechoslovak film industry, but neither did he receive the recognition. He became a case. It usually took him a long time to make his films. His most famous delayed film is the Barnabáškos case, which in the end took seven years to make. Solon's filmmaking gradually developed into an idiosyncratic reading of his and everyone's life of consent. He worked on his own cinematic expression, which could be called film as a case. His cinematic reconstruction and investigation did not press any charges or pass any judgments. His primary mission was to bear witness. He once said, I wish to be neither prosecutor nor judge. All I want to be is an honest and moral witness who wants to state what he knows about the case. And thus, satire became his tool of trade. It proved to be an universal instrument that resisted lies. The Barnabáškos case is based on a short story The Rise and Fall of Barnabáškos by Petr Karvaš, first published in 1954. Almost instantly after its publication, between 1954 and 1956, Barando Studios started adapting the short story. The adaptation was focusing on the rise of the musician. However, it did not work out in the end. The second attempt, between 1957 and 1958, was at Koliba Studios in Bratislava. Karvaš, Nitra and Solan started working on the adaptation. At that time, the film was turning more into slapstick than satire. They shifted the focus towards incompetent power decision in art and towards consequences of ignoring expertise and talent. Solan, he focused on bureaucratic machinery in the background, a machinery which promotes harmless conformists. In 1958, the film finally got greenlit. However, very shortly after, a political head of the Koliba Studios, a communist cadre, saw himself in the character of Barnabáškos and banned the film. The third attempt, came in 19, between 1963 and 1964 in the years of a very brief period of time when the political situation in Czechoslovakia slightly changed and finally it was possible to make such a film. This time Solon got inspired by the poetic of absurd theatre of Franz Kafka dealing with conflicts of individual versus society, a confrontation of satirical and absurd. And thus the Barnabáškos case became a study of invincibility of absurdity, a film about Barnabas Kos, which was to be made in 1958, but Barnabas Kos himself had banned it.